Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Earlier in the week, I began a new series meant for the Creative Cloud subscriber that only uses Lightroom because Photoshop intimidates them. In this series, I'm going to demonstrate for the Lightroom only user very simple things they could do in Photoshop from Lightroom. Today, we're going to edit a person's skin. I'll have all the videos I do in this series in a playlist. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to this playlist so you could make sure you don't miss any of the videos in it. Now, as far as today's video, I mentioned we're going to edit a model skin in Photoshop. I'm in Lightroom right now, and I did do a bit of editing in Lightroom. If I open up the basic tab, I just did highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. If I needed to do exposure and contrast, I would have done that, done that as well. So I would have edited a tone, and that's really what I did. I edited a tone, and if I needed to do white balance, I would have done that as well. Other than that, I recommend you don't do anything else. So don't do texture, clarity, dehaze, vibrance. Do lens corrections if you need them. Then send the image into Photoshop, edit or skin. Then when we come back into Lightroom, we could finish our editing in Lightroom. Now. Since I did tone already, I'm ready to send the image into Photoshop. To do that, we're going to right click right on the image, go down to Edit In, and over to Edit in Adobe Photoshop 2022. When I click on that, we'll get this dialog box. Now, you may remember if you watched that video I did earlier in the week that this dialog box didn't pop up. The image just opened up directly into Photoshop. That's because that image was a raw file. Raw files will just open up directly into Photoshop, and when you're done in Photoshop, you'll have two images, the raw file and the new file from Photoshop. If you're editing anything other than a raw file, for example, this is a JPEG, you'll have to choose how you want to edit it. Edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, edit a copy or edit original. I recommend you choose the top one. That way your original image stays pristine. You're not going to ruin it in Photoshop. You're going to edit a copy. Also, those Lightroom adjustments I did, just did, those will be included on the image when we go into Photoshop. So choose that first one and click Edit. It will take the image and open it up into Photoshop then. Now, there are dozens of different ways to edit a person's skin, smooth the person's skin in Photoshop. Some of them are very, very complicated. We're going to stay true to this series though and just do it in a click or two. We're going to use what's called a neural filter. To do that, go up to filter, down to neural filters. And when you do that, you'll see there's a number of neural filters. The top one is skin smoothing. Just turn that on. Once you turn that on, bam, smooth your skin. Now you could come in if you don't think it's smooth enough, you could move these sliders to the right. If you think it's too smooth, move them to the left. You could experiment, but I like it the way it is. Now we have to decide how we want to output it. Go down here where it says output and click the little drop down. You'll see there's a number of different ways to output it. I suggest you output it to new layer. If you do it to a new layer, your original layer stays intact. And once we get back into Photoshop proper, we may look at it and say, I don't like what it did. I want to redo it. And then you could just take that top layer, the new layer, and throw it out and start over. So I'm going to take new layer and just click OK. And you'll see once it opens back up into Photoshop proper, I have two layers now. I have the new layer on top. That's our smooth skin layer. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So it really did a good job. Now, if I decided I didn't like it and I wanted to do it over, just take this layer and drag it down to the little garbage can down here. And you'll throw that layer out and you'll have the original layer. You could start over. Now, I do like it, but let's just push this just a bit further. She has a bit of a blemish right here, and she has a flyaway hair right here. Let's get rid of those. To get rid of those, we're going to use what's called the Spot Healing Brush. Hit the J key on your keyboard, and you'll get the Spot Healing Brush, or you'll get one of the tools in this group, because that J key keyboard shortcut is shared by four different tools. 
If we go over here in the tool well, you can see the top tool right here. That is the spot healing brush. The one below it's the healing brush. The one below that is the patch tool. And the one below that is the content aware move tool. All four of those tools share that J key keyboard shortcut. When I hit the J key, it actually didn't pick the spot healing brush. It picked the healing brush. Those are actually two different tools. So we want the spot healing brush. Now, in some Photoshop workspaces, these four tools will be nested together. And what I mean by that, if we go up here to the quick selection tool and I long press with the left mouse button, you'll see there's three tools nested together. So again, some Photoshop workspaces, these four tools will be nested together. So just hit the J key on your keyboard. You'll pick one of them. Just long press with the left mouse button and make sure that you have the actual spot healing brush. You can see my four are not nested together. Once you have the spot healing brush, go up to the top to the brush attributes. Click that drop down. Make sure hardness is at zero. Then go to mode. Make sure it's normal. Then you're going to want to use, as far as type is concerned, either content to wear or proximity match. It depends on the image, but most often I use proximity match. I see this. I think that works pretty well. And then we're going to want to affect the size of the brush with the bracket key. So the right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller. Just get a brush that would work and then paint on this blemish, just like that. And if it doesn't, I mean, it got rid of it, but there's a little bit maybe right there. Just keep painting till it's gone. Like that, it's gone. All right, now let's get rid of this fly away hair. To do that, we're still going to use the spot healing brush. We're gonna get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And then what I recommend you do is don't try to paint over that entire hair all in one go. Take it in little parts. So paint like a little bit of it and then paint a little more and paint a little more and just keep going until you get rid of the entire hair. Now what you'll find is once you get over, get next to um, a different texture, for example, her eyebrow, it may screw up. So we'll... Get a little closer and you'll see. See how it's screwed up? If it does that, what you're going to want to do is instead of using the spot healing brush, you're going to want to use the healing brush. That's the tool directly below the spot healing brush. We'll click on that and then go up to the top. Make sure you're still using, um, well, I would put hardness maybe in the middle on this one. This would work pretty well. And make sure you're in normal mode and make sure that you're using sampled right here. And you could keep current layer, that will work. Then what, the way this tool works is you sample an area and then it will take pixels from that sample area and plant them over the area you want fixed. To sample an area, hold the Alt or Option key and alternate if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, and I wanna, oops, didn't wanna do that. Let me zoom in a little more. To sample, hold that Option key in and my computer keeps doing that, it's aggravating. All right, again, to sample, hold that alter option key in, you'll get a bullseye, then just left click the mouse button and you sampled right there. Then what you could do is you could just paint over and I'm replacing those pixels with those pixels I sampled. And you can see just like that. And I got rid of the stray hair, I got rid of that blemish. I could use that over here maybe as well. Click there and get rid of that. Looks pretty good. Now we need to do is save this. To save it, go up to File and then down to Save. And you'll notice in the lower left-hand side, there's this blue bar. Once that reach, reaches 100%, it's saved. Then go up and quit Photoshop. On a Mac, you just go up to Photoshop, quit Photoshop, Windows computer, click, you know, quit it like any other app. Once you do that, you'll see once you're back in Lightroom that the film strip will have two images in it. You'll have the original image and you'll have this new image. And you could see we smoothed the skin. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. It's as simple as that. Now I mentioned uh, if you want to continue editing the image in Lightroom, you can at this point. You'll notice that the basic tabs all reset because this is a new image now. The original image was the one that had our basic editing done to it. But you could just come in, you can finish editing. Maybe you want to, I don't know, Take a little saturation away, or maybe who knows what you want to do, but you could just continue your editing from this point forward. So that's how easy it is to smooth a person's skin in Photoshop. Hopefully this will um, help you 
better edit an image um, that you normally would have had to just use Lightroom for. I mean, you can smooth skin in Lightroom. It's just a little more difficult, and it actually doesn't do as good a job as Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>